reach to the hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel, uh, class will start at nine, definitely. So don't worry about that one. If you have anything to do, you can just do that right now. And we are. We are just taking an informal review that would be, of course, recorded, so you can always have a look at that if you want later on. So uh, this is our front end session and last week in front end, what we did was uh, this week we did not have any front end session because. You know. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Have a coffee <laughs> because again, as I said, we are still not started. We are taking an informal review. So we have talked about a uh, lots of uh, interesting thing and uh, some of the things you already knew about. Some of the things were. Not even not not new, but they they got a good refresher for most of you. And uh, now you guys feel a much much more confident in that and you know that, OK, what are the purpose of those per per particular elements or something? So we started talking about like, you know, in the beginning we started talking about uh, uh, what are the basic things or basic you know parts of HTML document? What how how does the web work? And we we reached to some of the semantical sections, and we talked about that uh, a very important issue of uh, of uh, of accessibility. Remember that these elements they used to be in good old times. They used to be they used not to have any of the semantical meanings. But now with the passage of time, they are all semantical elements like what their name suggests. They are actually what they what their name is. They are actually what they are. So actually header is a header. Main is the main area, main content. Footer is something that will always go at the bottom. And uh, section is one of the thing that would that might create a section aside. I told you that something related to the main content, but not mandatory. You can just take it away. So it's a, just a side note. Or a side note, whatever you call it. Then we talked about this nav navigation elements, and I told you that these elements, the semantic elements. Which are of course not mandatory for the document, but if we put these documents, if we put these elements in our document, in our HTML structure element, they will be playing a very, very important role. And they would be just, you know, they they for the accessibility issue, for screen readers issue, for the for the crawlers issue, you know, it, they will always perform a very important task for our document. And then we talked about some of the other aspects of HTML that we will continue to, to discuss. And we'll just to, today we'll just, you know. So heading levels we talked about, and we saw that there are multiple heading levels. Just in good morning. We have still not started by the way. Please don't worry. We are just taking an informal sort of review and uh, but I am recording that as well so that if uh, so again when the clock will take at nine, we'll just start formally. So we have just talked about uh, those uh, some of the uh, structure uh, semantical elements and uh, you know. Uh, I mentioned that a lot of time that these semantical elements are not mandatory for our document, but they are very important with respect to the semantical understanding of our document. Like someone will read our HTML and they will understand, okay, uh, if nav is there, so your website's all links I will find in this area. If there is a main, so so the screen reader will say, okay, I I know that the main contents lie in between the main content. Anyhow. So these are the things. Yes, uh, good morning, Jennifer, Evan, and Justin. So as I said, we are taking an informal review. So for that, we just talked about some of them. And not only that, we created some of the pages. And, and I told you about this, uh, like, you know, that try to maintain folders for that one. And uh, yes, I remember that someone gave a point that we were usually putting everything in one folder. I would I would really not suggest that one. And uh, the reason behind is that we don't want to, you know, clutter one of the folder. Rather, we want to keep our things very different, like very separate. The separation of concerns like images should be in one place. Videos should be at the other place and like that. So again, you know, it's the styling should be in our one, one of these one of the folder. And what is the benefit of doing that? That when you are using these things, you can just use this something called a relative URL which says like dot forward slash that says the root. So now we are on time. 
So I'm just starting now the formal review like we are now practically into our lecture. So again, for the purpose of our time start, welcome everyone. And so we saw that I would always recommend that always keep the different folders in a website and that would really give you uh, a good you know understanding of this relative pathing that how do you relatively uh, you know link to that uh, link to something so today uh, this is this was week 1 and 2 so today i'm starting my lecture with new folder and i'll call it week 3 right so it will be our week 3 and inside that week 3 so again i can i can create new folder and I'll just you know let's make it a habit of making a folder called pages for example right so where I'll just create my pages so I'll create my first page for today um I don't know if I mentioned that or not but this is something this might be something uh, not a very common or, or the old thing for you that almost always we call our first page of the website almost always I'm saying we will always call that index.html which is not a hard and fast rule but you know uh, it's uh, it's something that uh, that's very important because most of the web servers when they will look at your website when you want to publish them uh, the the main the gate or the entry point of your website they would try to find out index.html into that i hope that makes sense to everyone because we'll just you know so just keep in mind that uh, index.html should be the first page that we create in our uh, on our website so this is so in our pages i've just created index.html and we'll write you know so this is this is how we'll be doing we'll be just making a comment like you know everything so today is september 20 so that at the title you have a look at look at that what we are doing so in body so something uh some few things that were remaining i'll just start with those and then we'll just you know work our way through uh, today I might touch start touching the CSS as well. One of the things that I just you know uh, I just missed or maybe intentionally unintentionally was let me just call it some more HTML, right? So that I'm just calling it some more HTML for today. And what I'll say is the first thing that I would like to say is links or linking in HTML. And the tag for that is uh, I'll write the name of the tag. It's called anchor tag. Now I would like to talk about this linking because I hope you guys have learned about that one. Linking can be of two types, but let's talk about that. So when we want to make a link on our web page, what we do is that we use this anchor tag. Now, um, this anchor can be, for example, I want to connect it to the google.com, right? And I want to Google to appear on the text on my page, and I want it to connect to the google.com. So, you know, to connect it to the google.com, because this is the external linking by the way, so I'll say I'll have to write the complete path www.google.com. Now, what will happen? Let me just run this page with the server. What will happen that this Google will be written on my page and it would be connected with the google.com. You guys see that? It's connected to the google.com. Now, if I click on this one, it will take me to the google.com. Simple. And you guys have done that one. This is also called external linking. And then there is another type of external linking. Let, let me just write this as a heading, maybe, you know, uh, external linking, because linking can be of this different kinds. And you guys have done that one, maybe, but not with any. The external linking can be one more type. And what is the other type of external linking? That is a anchor. And for example, I have a page called history. Right history. So if I just come here and of course that history page has to be somewhere on my on my website. So for example, inside the pages, I create one more page and I call it history.html. Right. And let's complete that one. I just make that history.html over here. And I just write here history. And I should write here page one history of our company, something like that. So I've just created a page here, history.html. 
and insight index. I just want to make a link of that one. So I know that this history is at the same root folder with the index. So how would I link that one? I would say dot forward slash. This represents to the same root folder. And I would say history dot HTML. Right, and I hit save. Now, since remember anchor is an inline uh, inline tag, so it does not give a new line. So I'll have to just put a BR over here to put them the other line. Now what's happening is history.html. If I click on this one, I get my history of my company page open. So I, I basically get that, get that page from there and it opens up that one. Now, a very interesting and important thing. I, th I, I don't know if you guys have done that or not. What is so this is called external linking. You might link to some external website. You want, might link to, for example, let's make one more link just for the purpose of example. And I make it with Twitter.com. And I make it a Twitter link. Right, so we have three links over here. Twitter takes us to the Twitter. And Google takes us to the Google.com and history takes us to the history history page. Now, so far, so good. Now, I want to show you something that what is internal linking? Have you guys like, you know, you you, you have definitely you would have done that. And that is called I'll take H3 and I'll say internal link. Have you guys done internal linking? How to link something on the same page? Or maybe from the outside of the page to a particular area? Does anyone know about that one? Like internal linking. OK, that's wonderful. So I'll just, you know, quickly do that. Oh, that's wonderful. You guys have done that. So I'll, I'll very quickly do that because, you know, I if you guys have done. So what we do is that actually, um, you know, how do we do that? We typically try to name a particular section and then we just access that one. So again, I'll, I'll just give you a little thing because I want to have a document over here. Yes, exactly. So if I say lower 1000, for example, I have got a lot of text over here and I've intentionally put this text because after this paragraph, I want to put something. For example, I want to put a heading and other images here, for example, something like that. So I've got an images heading. Which is at the very bottom over here now. So to access this images area directly from my page from the top, as you have done with the top, I'll come here. And I can assign an ID to this area. ID is equal to, for example, I IMG1. If I allocate an ID to an area, which is I have named this one something, and I've given this H3 an ID. What is the benefit of that? If I go to the top and in this internal linking, if I just you know show you in this internal linking, if I want to make a link to the images, what I'll do, I'll self put hash. The buffer side and IMG1. Check my images, for example, something like that. If I hit that, you see that I have got a link. And if I click on this link, do you see we go to the top or uh, bottom? And again, because there is nothing after that images, that's why it is just showing images. But if if images also had something after that, which I'll put here, again, a 1000 lorem, very bad, but let's do that. So now if I show you, if I run this page, refresh, and I show you. So if I say check my images, you see that I reach to the bottom of the page. So I don't know, yes, you guys have done that, but I don't know if you guys know that. Actually, what we do is that we assign an ID to an area, and then we can access that. In the same way as, as some of you have done that, after this images, if I want to have a link that, that for example, and I want to say that go to the top. So whenever someone clicks on this one, they, re they are redirected to the top that you have. You guys have done that. So if I want to do that, there are multiple ways right now. If I just put a hash, maybe it works out. Let's see that. So I have a top. If I click on this, you see it is taking on the top. But the most real thing that I want you to understand is that actually the thing is that, for example, I want to say I would give it ID equal to top. Then actually what happens is that we allocate or we connect that thing with the ID is equal to top. And that is something that I would like you to guys to remember. That so you see it's rather than this one, I'll say 
h ref is equal to hash top. So connect to the top. So if I just do that, check my images, and if I click on top, now I'm you know very much doing that. So one thing that I want to show you is my URL. If you look at the URL, it's it says hash top, right? If I click on check my images, you will see hash img1. Right now I am at mg img1. If I just click on the top, you will see that my top basically means that I have gone to the top of the document. Right, wonderful. And how about one more thing that I want to discuss again because you guys have done this uh, linking and everything and I'll just keep this text here because you know I'll just take some more advantage of that. So now I'll place another H2 and forms in HTML. I, have you guys used the forms in HTML? The forms like you know have you created any forms to take input from the user? Yes or no? No, when it first says no. OK, Angelica was saying yes, we did. OK, I don't know if uh, Angelica, did you did you study it on your own or maybe it was discussed as a but anyhow, uh, any any case, I'll just you know discuss that over here. Many thank you very much and uh, Matthew, thank you very much, Justin and Tina. Now let's discuss the form. What are the forms? Forms are used. Forms are used to take input from user. This is very important and if the forms are one of the very, very important part of of any HTML page because they will be used to take input from the user. Now listen over here. Forms typically are made by using the form element. So the element is form. If you just put form and hit enter. I get a form. Now let's make a form and then I will I will talk about a lot of things. Form has multiple attributes. One of the attribute is action. One of the attribute that it has not added, it would have added that is called method. And form can be given like, you know, there can be other attributes of the form as well. Now, what is action? Action is actually, you know, let's write that over here. Action attribute refers to what you want to do with the data when form is submitted. Are you guys getting that one? Action attribute will refer to this one that what you want to do with the data when the form the form is submitted action attribute. So for example, I can say maybe we, we do not have anything of like that, but I'm just telling you maybe send this data to a file, whatever data.php. So when user submits the form, the data should reach. Don't worry about PHP. What is that PHP? Because it's some page that has the capability to receive data. So whenever user fills in the form, send this data to that, like send this form data to data.php that will receive it and that will do something with it. Make sense, everyone? So I'm saying that send this data to, to data.php to maybe, you know, cv. whatever. You have a file that is capable of receiving the data and processing it, so you send it to that. So action refers to what you want to do. One of the valid action might be you don't want to do that. Rather, you want to do that mail to. So ABC at keen.com. So it means that you want that whenever user submits the form, you want it to be mailed to ABC at keen.com. Is that making sense to everyone? The action attribute. So action attribute refers what you want to do with the data when the form is submitted when the form is done person submits the form what should happen here i'm saying mail to all the data to my abc at keen.com account or i would say as i said there is a php file there is something yes Angelica, you would have done that so php file that has that has something now the next attribute is method it's very important and i would like to talk about that method there are two methods through which the data is sent from by the form First method is called get method. Get method. And that the other method is called. So there are two methods get and post. Now I'll talk about the get first of all. So what is the method? Let's talk about here. Again, I'll, I'm just writing the notes as well with that one. So method attribute. Method has two values get and post. Now what get means send data 
as part of URL. And post means. And post means send data as part of the body of the document. Make sense everyone now see here. We have two methods of sending data. One can be get method, one can be post method. So I will come to come back to this one. You know, what does that mean? Get means that you are want to send data as part of URL and post means you want to send data as part of the body of the document. Both have their pros and cons and we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk about them. But right now. Oh my God. But right now what we are doing is that we are trying to just, you know, um, understand the concept of form now. Forms have like so let's 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 consider action what I want to do with the data and method I want to use I want to use the get method to send data. So you see that let let me it's uh, Visual Studio is also showing me a, a good help. Correspond to HTTP get method form form data are appended to the action attribute URI with a question mark as a separator. I'll talk about that. Don't worry. So I'll I'll show you what is happening. Now form has different. Uh, different uh, controls or different things that we create. One of the things that we create on form is called label. Label. What is label? I'll just you know say that. So again, as its name suggests, label means label for something. You see at the very bottom of my page, you see name. I want to take name of the user as input. So I, I labeled that one. There is an attribute for which is very important, but I'll talk about that shortly. Then there is an there is an element which is very important and it will be used most of the times which is called input element. Input. Now. Input element has. Um, input element has an attribute which is called type. If I show you type. Type represents what type of el input element we want to make. If I just leave this like this input type is equal to text and hit save. Look at that. Do you guys see that I have got my input box over here? Input type is equal to text refers to a text box. And just for the example I'm showing you, if I write input type is equal to radio, it will create a radio button. Do you see that radio button? If I write input type is equal to checkbox, checkbox, it will create a square square shape checkbox. I did not take any feedback for so long. Are you guys understanding label is label for this text box? And then this text is basically text means the text box over there. Wonderful. Thank you. Now. Now why I, I asked for the feedback because I'm about to tell you something very interesting. Every input. So you know if you see here, if I if I show you in the in my page, if I refresh that, for example, this page and I have this form. I have to come and click in the text box to make it active. Make sense? You would have experienced maybe that sometimes on a website you go and you click on the field or the label, the text like it, it gets activated. It means the label is has to be connected with the text box. Now here comes a very important point. If to this input input box, I give a label. Uh, sorry, I give an ID and I say ID is equal to NM, for example, for name, right? ID is equal to NM. For name. And I give this NM to label for attribute NM. See what will happen now and look at my output. When I come and click on name. Do you guys see what has happened? This name label is now connected with the input box. And again, if I refresh, I click in text box, it gets activated. Refresh. I click on name, it gets activated. Did you guys felt? Did you guys feel what is happening over here? I have connected. So for if you give the ID of a of an input label, uh, input text type to a label, it becomes the both of them becomes connected together. We have connected them together. Was I able to make this point clear to everyone? <laughs> Can I have a quick feedback? So a label, if you want to connect it to some text box, you do what? you will give the ID of that text box to that one. Wonderful. That's wonderful. I can see a lot of people are are doing now. 
Now let's talk about like, let's talk about something very interesting. I want to give it an ID, not NM. Maybe I want to give it a very uh, like you know a more uh, a more descriptive ID. So I'll say for example first dash name. First dash name. I'm just giving that one. So again, I'll connect it with the first dot name. Now see here. So I've given an ID. ID is used. So I remember someone asked a question some time back. What is the difference between ID and uh, uh, and uh, and class? I'll talk about that, but let's let's right now discuss. ID is actually a unique attribute that is given to an element and it should be only one once given. So if I have given ID first name to this text box, I should not be giving this same ID to any other element. So first difference you can remember is that ID is there to make element unique on the web page. I think you can remember this point of time. Other than ID, I can have multiple attributes of this, this text box. One can be name. Now, you might be thinking what is, what is going on? <laughs> so for example, I say first and name. A bit, a bit, or maybe, you know, first, for example. You might be thinking what is the difference between ID and name? So very important, remember. ID is something through which an element becomes unique on the page. And a name is something through which this field will be recognized when I send this data to data.php. How many of you understood this concept? I'm repeating. ID is used to make this input box unique on the page. And if you want to apply some styling, if I want to apply some scripting, I can access it with the ID name, ID first dash name. But when I submit this data and this data goes to the data.php page, the data.php page, while trying to take out the value from the name, uh, from the name attribute, uh, from, the, from the name text box, it will use this name to understand that one. Was I able to make this understand to everyone? That ID is for the same page or same accessing for scripting for styling. Name is for the recognition of this text field inside the inside the data.php in our case or inside the file where you are sending data to. Mary, does that make sense? ID and name, the difference between ID and name. I hope that that you guys are making sense of it. So name will recognize this field on the other. Now, there is another very important attribute and it has no value. So, you know, uh, I'll just write another attribute and that attribute is called autofocus. Autofocus. If I say autofocus and if I hit save, look at that. Autofocus. If I refresh this page, hmm, uh, it should be autofocus. <laughs> Using the right term, auto focus. Hmm. Oh, let me see that there's one more attribute. I'll I'll check that one and then I'll come to auto focus. Rather, it should do that, but anyhow, I'll I'll just you know give you another. So one thing is another attribute is called tab index. Tab index is equal to one. Now, what do you mean by tab index? When my page is running. Let's let me show you when my page is running and I hit tab. You see that when I hit tab, the first tab that is reached is, is basically this one. Tab index is equal to one. Are you guys getting that one? Tab index. So if I hit, refresh that and I hit a tab, so tab index one means the first element that would be tabbed that would have. So, you know, this is for making a form that is not mouse dependent. Rather, keyboard can access that one. Are you guys getting that one? There is another option. There is another attribute called autocomplete. Autocomplete. Now autocomplete is equal to autocomplete has different different values. If I say autocomplete different name. Okay, not a problem, Stephen. So now if I say autocomplete is equal to given name, what will happen? If I come to my text box, I click on that. Whatever names have like it has in its in its uh, you know uh, browser's memory, they will come. They will appear over here. Are you guys getting that one? 
So for example, whatever name we have, so auto complete will just you know to do that, and I'll I'll use that auto complete with that with one one another thing as well. So auto complete given name, auto complete another text box and even text to yeah, exactly exactly even that's what and even I'll do that. I'll do that shortly. I mean I'll do that. Another attribute placeholder. Another very interesting attribute. Placeholder is equal to enter your name here. Now. Do you see this placeholder text inside this already? Which is which is a dull text, but it shows that enter your name here. Are you guys getting that one? Unless you enter the name, it shows you the text. This is called placeholder. Right? Then there are other attributes as well. Let's let's one is called max length. How much how much length I want it to go? For example, I said 30. Now see here, what does that mean? If I come here and I start typing, it will stop at 30. You know what I mean? If I don't put this max length attribute, and at times you need that one, right? And I hit save and I refresh that. If I come here, you see I keep on typing and it keep on accepting the values. Are you guys getting that one? So max length tell is that you have to stop at some particular point. I don't want you to enter so many things. So I'll say max length equal to 30. Now what does that mean? If I come here and if I start entering something, it will stop at 30. You see that it is not going anymore. So 30 letter, it has stopped. Are you guys getting that one? Now, I'm just wondering why autofocus is not working because it has to work. I don't know. Let me just see that. Because autofocus has no value. Let I'll, I'll, Maybe sometimes the things change. Maybe they have introduced a true also. <laughs> Let me just see that equal to. So let's 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 try to do that. Um, not even that is working. I'll have to check that one autofocus. I don't know why it is not working. Autofocus usually has like it would be automatically focused when the form like the page loads. I don't know why it is not working anywhere, but I'll have to check that one. Anyhow, so this is our first uh, first name. Now I'll copy this one from the label and I come and I paste it and now I want to make uh, for example, a label for email. So I'll say label for email. I'll call my field email. And I write email. I've just copied and paste the same thing, right? Input type is text will be same. But here you know that I have connected to email. So I'll write email. Name is equal to again email. You can you can name and ID the same thing. Don't worry. And tab index as even ask the question. Yes, even it would be two. And autocomplete, see here, this is very important. Autocomplete is not given name. It should be email now. So autocomplete now accept email. It will give if it will give the email option over here. Let's put our email here and let's keep the other things same. Now see here, when I come and click inside this one, are you guys understanding that it is giving me all the email options that I have on my page? Are you guys getting that one? This is giving me all the options on my page. Make sense? All the emails. Here, you remember it was giving names. Here it is giving the emails. Are you guys understanding the importance of autocomplete attribute? Exactly, even because of autocomplete. And now, even your question, the, the, the question that you asked. If I hit first time tab, it goes, you see, it goes in the name. If I hit tab again, it goes in the email. So even do now we know that we can create a very nice form with with only keyboard interactions that would just keyboard will be doing that for us. Is that is that interesting even you understand that one? Now I would like to make one more one more one. Let's create that. I'm not copying that now. Now I'm creating label and this label is for date. I'll create a date. So I write a date label. I will write a date label. And now I'll come here and I'll write input type is equal to date. Now input type is equal to date. Wonderful. Na and ID is equal to date. Name is equal to date. Remember, I'm, I'm giving ID and name both because I want it to be recognized on the next page. And tab index is equal to four, uh, three. Because I want to keep that one over here. So now see here. I've just given this date 
And now you see that event that we've got the calendar over here. I can pick up the calendar. It will just plug in the date over here. So input type is equal to date means I have to create an input type of date option and I get a calendar here. Got everyone? We, we, are, we are getting a calendar over here. Make sense, everyone? And this is quite interesting again, you know, because we can have a date option and we can just, you know, take that date from the user. And let's say we are making a form for registration, something and, 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 you know, we, we want to, for example, I'll come here. And let's, let's, let's do that. So now let's make another, another, uh, another label. And I'll call it for position. For example, we are making a job, job form positions. And I say, Positions where the positions that are applied to. So I'm I'm giving a label of positions. After that, I'll just come here and I'll write, for example, input type is equal to text. I'm just putting the type is equal to text right now. Oh, Valentine, yes. We, we, can you change the date format? Uh, I I have practically not looked in, into that one, Valentine. I'll I'll see that if we can change that. I don't exactly know on top of my head that we can change that format or not. I'll have to just maybe look into that one, right? So I don't know if, if we can change the format, right? Okay, so now input type is equal to text. I'm just placing that one. And I'll give it ID is equal to position because I've connected to the positions. Positions. And let me give a tab index equal to four. Now, there is a very interesting thing. Positions means, for example, you want user to enter positions for job, something like that. So one is that I give user, user say HR, for example, or IT technician or something like that, they enter something. But you know, rather than asking them to enter, I'm, I'm telling you a very interesting way that we create something called data list. We create a list and that is called data list. So I'll create a data list, right? I'll give it, ID, ID is equal to, well, I'll just, you know, give it an ID and I'll just give it an ID is equal to, for example, I'll call it positions. So I'm creating a data list, which I will use. So if I come in data list, so for each value of the data list, I'll give an option. So I'll say option. Now value is equal to, for example, IT, Technician, right? The first option. The second option, value is equal to HR manager, something like that. Option is equal to, value is equal to the next one might be, you know, um, clerk, something, you know, I don't know. I'm just guessing some of the positions. Option, and the last one maybe, you know, data entry, something like that. Now I've created a list over here and I've given certain options over there, right? In the data list. Now I want to connect this list with my position, with my position text box. So I'll come over here in the position text box. I will give an attribute called list is equal to positions. Now see that what is happening. List is equal to position in input type. Now, if I come and click on this one. Okay. Maybe I have to put some text after that one because you know. So I'll have to put some text over here. Okay, so it's not showing the positions. It's doing wonderful things today. <laughs> These are all tested things. Let me just check that. Maybe I've just misspelled something or something has not. Input type is equal to date, ID is equal to this one. List is equal to positions. Okay, it looks like it is correct. Now, what is the name of the list? Let's change the name of the list sometimes maybe. So pause positions for position, pause. And here I would say the list is equal to 
pause. Let's do that. Sometimes maybe naming, renaming on. You see here, <laughs> sometimes names are conflicted. So see here, when I click on that one, it shows me all the list position that I have over there. So I've just renamed the list with the pause like positions and list is equal to position in my text box. Right? So now it's basically what? It's giving an option over here to user that they can select. I don't want them to enter anything. Rather, I want them to just do a drop down and select something from here so that there is no spelling mistake or something. And it should not be my same mistake as well. You see here, that's that that will give the options over there. Let's move forward and and use another very interesting uh, attribute input. Uh, sorry, label first of all. Label and label is for upload. I want someone to upload their resume. So I'll write upload resume. Right. Upload resume and now I'll create an input type. Input type is equal to here. See what I'll say. Uh, what I'll do. I would say input type is equal to file. ID is equal to upload. And name is equal to upload. And tab index is equal to. Oh, I did not set the tab index for my. Uh, no, I have set up that position. So I'll set up five. Tab index is equal to five. Now, another very important attribute here. Except equal to what type of file types you will accept? Dot doc. Dot docx. And application slash PDF. This should be the accepted format for the file. What does that mean? Now if I come here and I click on this choose file. You will see that it can it can just you know I can accept any of the file and you know it would it would just give me those files which are which are except basically the dot doc or dot docx etc files and I can access them. Are you guys getting that one? So this is file uploading. If I if I want to upload a, upload a file, right? So my document looks very bad. Why why not? Let's add a water CSS. Remember, <laughs> you know it it's not looking very pretty. So I I want to add. You know I, I'll I'll discuss CSS by the way, but I'm just trying to make it a little prettier today <laughs> because it's looking very bad. And and I have just have too much text on that one. That's why also. So I go to the title. I just add the water CSS, right? And having added that, you'll see that it will make a much more difference to us. <laughs> now the form looks a bit better, <laughs> right? So I've just done that one. So now we have got the upload resume as well, and I can upload the resume also, and it will only show me those types that I have mentioned over there. So it will just show me the PDFs or anything that would be that would be coming up over there. Make sense, everyone? And now, last but not least. In the form, we have another option. In the form, we have another option, and that another option is last one, uh, not last. I'll, I'll just maybe input and type is equal to submit. And also, input input type is equal to reset. Now these are the two buttons that will come in the form, and I'll show you that. So if you look at over, I have a submit button through which when I'll send the data, it will be submitted. And I have a I have a reset button that will clear out. So if I enter something. I enter something and I select the position and I'll, I'll just submit that data will be submitted. And if I click reset, hit reset, look at what will happen. My form is all clear. I hope everyone got this one. This is basically input type is equal to submit and input type is equal to that one. So this is our these are our and we'll be talking about forms a lot. There there are certain other options as well. There is the checkbox. I, I've not used the checkbox or you know some. For example, let's add that one maybe before submit. So for example, let's make a label for a program that you are applying for or you know department maybe. You know, maybe we can have multiple departments at uh, one one time together. So I'll say department, right? And here I would get like input type is equal to checkbox or maybe radio button. Let's take radio, right? And now 
what I can say, I would say that, for example, you know, I would say name equal or ID is equal to ID is equal to, for example, I say Department of HR. It's HR one and name is equal to. Name is equal to department. And you know, because this label, I'm not trying to connect to that one. Rather, I will just give its own label. I can say with this one value equal to. HR department. Let's do that. OK, not value. I'll have to introduce a label for that one as well. So I have just, you know, this this department, for example, this first radio button. And if I just copy that one and paste that again, maybe equal to IT. And name is equal to department. I'll just keep the name same and why submit makes it automatically save to the data to be file. So exactly. I'll, I'll talk about that event. Just give me a second. So if I just, you know, click, come over here. So I've given them both of them. I've given the same name department and department. If I change the name of one of them, for example, if I just do that, something like this. Are you guys understanding what is happening in a radio button? You need to give the same name to the both of them and their values will be different as I as I gave the value before. If I don't give the same name, they won't be they won't be like radio button should be one selected at time. They won't be selected at one at a time. So if I just write that department, now you see that I'll click one of them and the other will be unchecked. Are you guys getting that one? That's that's something else. now events question. What will happen when I hit submit? Yes, even the action that you have mentioned over here, abc.php, whatever you have mentioned over here will happen. I'll I'll show you that. Don't worry. I'll I'll run this as a whole and let's let's enter some data. Ln ln at gmail.com. Let's select a date over here. 21st, for example, position applying for HR manager. No file I'm selecting and department is, I think I have selected this one. Now see here what, what happened. When I submit that, I get data.php file not found. Even, are you getting that? It means it is sending the data, but of course there is no data.php. So it says that cannot find this, cannot get this data.php. Exactly, exactly. Jennifer, yes, you are right. They should have a label and, and I, I just intentionally missed that. Like, you know, uh, not, not entered the labels over there. Yes, they should have a label. And by the way, let me show you. Let me show you. Checkbox in HTML. I'll show you, you know, the, the real format of that one because I don't know. Don't know. So ID name your vehicle. Yeah. So you see that every everyone has a label attached to that one. So you can you can al allocate a label for every particular one. Label for vehicle one, label for vehicle two, and you know this is basically you know that 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 would be that would be fine for you. So you can you can have a label for everything, right? Okay. So now see here. Uh, so Evan, did you get the answer? Now there is a very interesting thing that I want you to notice. You do you look at my my URL? Look at my URL. What it's doing? URL shows. After question mark, it shows first is equal to Allen. Email is equal to Allen and percent 40 gmail.com. Date is equal to 21 September and upload is equal to department is equal to on, etc, etc, etc. Now, do you guys see that? Actually, when we use this get method, remember when we use this get method, data goes as the part of appending as a URL. Are you guys getting that one? What I'm trying to say here? Data goes as the part of the URL. Now, what if I come here and I change this get to post? Do you remember I told you when get method is used? What get get means that send data as part of URL and post means send data as part of the body of the document. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, it's very insecure, very insecure. But at times I'll tell you that what 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 happens when that one? So if I just come here and I just come back over here and I enter some data here and again, for example, let's refresh that. And let's enter some data. Let's select the date. Let's select the position, something like that. Let's select this one and I submit. Now, do you see that there is no question mark here? Yes, post is a secure way, but let me tell you a very interesting thing, you know, even that most of the sites they use get and they do the encryption of the data. What does that mean? <laughs> Let me show you something very interesting. 
google.com when i write dogs i have done that before if i write dogs do you see that actually it goes in the you see question mark q is equal to some this is this also goes as the query string it means it's also doing the dot thing another very important thing when we do the outlook login outlook uh, uh, email login so we, yes they, it will hash that it will just do those kind of things and it will show you that okay we can encrypt the data before going so data will be encrypted in our mailbox as well it goes as the as the encrypted data you know what i mean so it's basically that that same thing over there so anyhow yes you are right it might be you, you it might be right to say that it is secure but of course the security uh, does not mean we can we can just always do that so if i just put that the 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 post or the get method if i see the get method it will just you know now the data will go as the part of url and you see that my data is going as a part of url it becomes a query string i don't know how the that one they met well, but if subset is cracked enough it only stores the hash and not load again passwords <laughs> yes sir. yes christopher okay so that's that's uh, that's some some cool stuff that we have you know talked about. I think the forms were very new for you guys, and you guys now understand the forms. I hope that I've just given the description as well. So it's the lecture note plus code file, everything together over here, and we have got uh, like you know some some cool stuff. Let me see if I want to show something else before we move to before we switch to our uh, CSS. That would be. That would be something where OK, yes, one more thing. Yes, that's a good thing to remember. One more thing that I want to just remind you, you guys would have done that one and I'll write it over here. And why not? Let's put that also somewhere here. And I'll call it tables in HTML. Have you guys used tables in HTML? Of course, have you guys used that tables and you know about table. I'll just tell you a few things about the tables because I want to. Yes, OK, that's wonderful, wonderful. Right. So you know tables have like you know we can create tables in HTML table with by using the table element. Table element and a very interesting issue I would like to tell you that if I want to make a table actually we create rows you know TR inside the rows we create the TDs table data. So for example I say name and I say email for example. I would like to tell you a few things. So name and email, but it's not showing any border or anything. So you know, one of the obsolete attribute is there. Border is equal to one. Now, if I hit that border is equal to one, you see border appears around the table. But do you guys see that it is red in color over here? Please remember one thing, and I would like you to just remember that very clearly. Whenever you submit an assignment or QAP or something, you must not have any red attribute <laughs> or red, uh, red color, red colored something. <laughs> just um, I'm just trying to make a statement over here. You must not have any red colored something because it means you are using something obsolete. If I just, you know, this border is obsolete out now. I told you in the beginning, but we never did that. I'm doing this today. A document has to be a valid HTML document when you submit it to me for any QAP or something. And this is the right time to tell you. What does that mean? We have got a lot of HTML validators online that we can use to validate our HTML document. What does that mean? Let me show you. For example, randomly I have searched HTML validator. I go to W3C validation. First question, did you guys do that uh, this validation or think like before? If not, not a problem. So there, there are multiple things. I'll just come here. I say direct input, direct input. OK, not a problem. This is a validator, HTML validator. Now see here what I'm doing, Christopher. I'll come and copy my whole code, control C. I copy my whole code, everything I've copied. And I come here and paste the whole code. And I would do check. Now, I have given my HTML for validation. Yes, all of the code for validation. And now see here what it says. It says there is a warning. The document appears to be lorem ipsum text, but HTML start tag has lang is equal to in. 
Do you understand what it's saying? Warning, it is just giving a warning. You have said language is equal to English, but you are using lorem ipsum, which is not English. So are you in your senses? <laughs> you know what I mean? HTML actually shows HTML lang is equal to English. So I'll talk about this all the problems because you will really enjoy that. So you see HTML lang is equal to English. You know what warning it is giving? It says that <laughs> are you in your senses? You have said HTML lang is equal to English and you are using lorem ipsum, which is not English by the way. <laughs> so it is just giving warning. It is not something for which it will stop my document. Right now it says info trailing slash on void elements, etc, etc. <laughs> now I am really concerned with something over here. Error, not info. Error. Do you see the error? The border attribute on the table element is obsolete. Christopher, do you make sense of it? I, I wanted to discuss this. This is very important. <laughs> so border attribute table element is obsolete. OK, and then no P element in the scope, but a P and tag scene. And you know what has happened? <laughs> I have done something wrong over here. When I add this another, uh, you know, I just added this one. I just missed or I just uh, disturbed the paragraph. Let me show you. It's a good. So you see that it was starting. The paragraph was starting from here. And I did what I in between somehow. I just inserted the table thing. I'll show you. Oh my God, it's here. So like the forms and then maybe after that one. So there's a, there's a paragraph going on and here you see I just not and ended the paragraph. <laughs> you remember what, what happened? So if I can say I end the previous paragraph and maybe because there is a paragraph ending at the end. So I start a paragraph as well. Are you guys getting that one? I've just done something wrong. Let's copy it again. And paste it again over here. I paste it again and check. Check now see here. Let's come back. So again, there are certain warning infos. Now see here. Maybe still there is something P missing. There is a paragraph and it, it, it is not matching the paragraph again again, but that don't worry about that one. But do you guys understand what is happening? I have because I've made a mess of the document. So but I wanted to tell you the border attribute with table is obsolete. Now see here the value for for attribute of the label element must be the ID of non hidden form control. Maybe I have, you know, this department. I have not created any element with that because there were multiple elements. So it is saying that label is should be for one element. It should not be for that. So I'll just go back in the form for the time being. I'll try to remove that error at least in the form. Here, so label for department. I'll just, you know, take because department is multiple things and it says it has to be attached with one ID, not the name. Right, so I'm just not giving anything. Control C, Control V over here, and I check again, and let's see if that error has gone. See that the, the, that one error is gone, but again the P element is here. So you guys understanding what I'm saying? Before submission of your QAP, always. So again, I have an error that I have to remove. I don't know. <laughs> Somehow I have to remove that. But again, I, I, you know, just because I've made a mess of this document, that's why I'm saying. So it's not accepting that one. Maybe it says that there is an ending paragraph found, but there is no starting starting element for that one. So it maybe it's here. Like you know, you see that. Let me just see that because after table, I'll just put a P, and I'll remove this one. And you know, I will know that as well because my my prettier stops working. And you see that now all P's are closed. Hopefully, Control A, Control C, and I come back over here. Control A, Control V, check. Now look at the errors. I have just one error border attribute. Are you guys getting that one? And again, rather than Control C, Control V, if I come here and I change this border is equal to from the table, I change that one over, over here. If I say, OK, remove this border. And now check my document. Now check my document. Now let's see that. Do you see that all errors are gone? This is just info and warning. Don't worry about the info and warning. Worry about the error. <laughs> Christopher, why not you? You should be the one to do that. Embed that over there. You know, it's actually embedded somehow. And I embed it. You see, Christopher, uh, uh, it's also shouting out that you are using something wrong. I'll tell you another very important thing. If I say uh, not a, 
if I oh, sorry, if I say. If I just say, say come over here and I say. P and I say. A line equal to center. You see, remember you guys would have tried that and you would have done that. A line is equal to center. So I have written down something. Hello, hello. So it would it would be centered aligned. Interestingly, it would be centrally aligned. I'll show you. It would be centrally aligned, but the problem is I'll show you. <laughs> you see that it's coming in center, but you see that align is a red color. Align is a red color, so it's actually obsolete. It's actually obsolete. And again, if you want to if you want to check that one, you go back to the validator. You go back to the validator. And in the validator, just let's do one thing. In the validator, I'll go to the validator. And let's do something. I come here and again, you know, just to just to check my document again. If I write P a line equal to center. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm not copying and pasting that one. I only know like 40% JS, 60% Python. I don't think I can even make plugin in this. <laughs> OK, so uh, you know you would be Christopher, you would be soon able to do that as well. Don't worry about that one. So I've used that align over here. And after that, making a line, if you see here, the align attribute on P element is obsolete. Christopher, does that make sense to you? Should I hope that when your QAP will come, you guys will submit your QAPs, there will be no red elements, red attributes over here. I don't want to see the red color in that one, right? It has to be without red colors. Whenever you will make something that is not uh, that is not part of uh, that is obsolete out, it will always give it a red color. Having said that, I'm stopping here, and this is September twenty and front end. This is the front end one because we'll have JavaScript class after that. So I commit. Everything should go there. You will find everything over there. So should I hope that you guys enjoyed today's lecture? You enjoyed the content. You learned something new as well today because in Java and in, in HTML, you guys have done a wonderful job in HTML, by the way, I should say. But again, uh, we have you have learned something new and now you have a have a better understanding of that one. OK, so thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jana. And uh, I hope everything is clear to everyone. I try my best to have. OK, Lauren, that's wonderful. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And I hope to meet you soon. <laughs>